the AAC is expanding, my brother. They are. There was a report by Pete Thamel late on Monday, I guess, or maybe it was Tuesday morning. I don't remember exactly when, but they are bringing in six Conference USA schools. And we talked a lot about this, trying to figure out who they would go after and whatnot, and it appears their biggest uh, reason for bringing in schools was schools that are in a big-time recruiting hotbed, which didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but we'll talk about that. The schools that they are bringing in, that they are expected to get applications from and then expected to approve to join the conference, it's going to turn it into a 14-team conference. They are bringing in Florida Atlantic, Charlotte, North Texas, UTSA, Rice, and UAB. Florida Atlantic, uh, down in Boca Raton, that makes sense. You obviously continue your Florida footprint, I get it. Uh, Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina, recruiting hotbed, makes sense. UTSA, San Antonio, again, makes sense. Good football program, you know, building up, all that good stuff. Rice, that is in Houston, that gives you back the Houston market uh, after losing the Houston Cougars, uh, at least a little bit. UAB in Birmingham, of course, a good regional team, you know, recruiting hotbed in, in Birmingham, Alabama, for sure. And North Texas. The North Texas one is the one that surprises me the most. Because it's in Denton, it's just north of Dallas, you've already got SMU in Dallas. Why would you double dip into that same market with a program that is not nearly as big as SMU? Yeah, I don't understand sense. I don't understand that one at all. They're 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 not super competitive, you know. I don't know how how you know. And the only reason much. I could see, by the way, would be if if they are preparing for SMU to leave the conference to join the Big 12 if the Big 12 decides to expand again in 2024 I wonder if TCU might fight that, though. They absolutely could. They absolutely could. I mean, could. it's one thing to bring another team in from your state. It's a totally different thing to bring somebody in who's in your city. I agree. I agree. Otherwise, like but that's, that's, that's the same problem SMU should be having with this. That's like, right. It, you're talking not a, a long distance between North Texas and SMU, and now they're going to be in the same conference. So, it, definitely strange. My questions were like, why not MTSU? Why not Marshall? Why not Louisiana Tech? Why not Western Kentucky? Those are all bigger football brands than some yep. of these. Maybe not the recruiting hotbeds, but those but, all seem... You already have, what, three teams in Texas? Why would you need a four? Yes. I mean, I agree. I just I, I don't understand. Uh, well, it's not like it's a recruiting hotbed. You're already in that recruiting hotbed, and yes. you have multiple teams in that recruiting hotbed. It's it's definitely strange. Now, we'll we'll jump off of the AAC. Let's let's kind of talk about maybe what happens to these other teams in the in Conference USA because you're down to eight teams in Conference USA. The Sun Belt has talked about expansion. I think that you absolutely have to at this point because you are sitting yeah. at 10 teams and you've got Conference USA that's sitting out there with only eight at this point if they lose these six, if it's you know confirmed, all that good stuff, if it ends up happening. If you're the Sun Belt, you go get all four of those teams that I, that I just laid out. MTSU, Marshall, Louisiana Tech, Western Kentucky, they're all in that Sun Belt footprint. They all make sense as far as regional rivalries, et cetera. The Sun Belt set, sets themselves up to have really good regional rivalries not too far of a distance to travel for non-revenue sports. This this kind of fell into their lap perfectly, in my yep. opinion. Yep. Sit back, wait, be patient, and then and then grow from there. So then that leaves four teams in Conference USA, which is no longer going to be a conference. No. But I would imagine that these would have to go independent at some point. But Florida International, uh, Old Dominion, UTEP, and Southern Miss. Uh, Old Dominion was already kind of headed that direction. Remember, they were one of the schools that that did not play. Didn't play football? Yeah, during the COVID year, even though the rest of the conference played. So that would make sense to me. I could maybe see the Sun Belt uh, bringing in Florida International. Maybe, I guess, just to have a Florida footprint, but I I don't know. I was just about to say, how much footprint? Do they have any teams in Florida? No. Yeah, then I would would grab Florida International. The other, the other thing, I'm, I'm shocked nobody's grabbed Southern Miss. Yeah, you, uh, Southern so, Miss and, and UTEP are the so other two. So much. Everybody knows about the, the, the state of Louisiana, you know, in the amount of talent that comes out of the state of Louisiana. Mississippi, per capita, 
has just as much big time talent as Louisiana, Texas, Florida. There's a ton of college level football kids coming out of the high schools of Mississippi. And on top and of I'm that, I'm really that, shocked nobody wants that footprint. Southern Miss has got a a lot of tradition. I mean, a ton of tradition. So it, very surprising so that's, that that's they didn't where, have like, a home. Like here. I'm surprised North Texas is there for American and not Southern. Yeah, I, because that gives you in Mississippi, which is which is a a recruiting for 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 football. Yes. and has a, has a has a big tradition. Yeah, and cares about football. Spends a lot of money on football. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, I'm with you. I'm with you. I just, I don't know. I, it, it doesn't seem, there's not going to be a home for everybody, right? And that's what no, I'm curious about. No, but I understand is, some of these people not getting a home. Like, nobody's going to pick up UTEP. Why would they? They're going to end up being UMass and, and UConn. Like, congratulations. What, I mean, maybe, it, it, so the Mountain West is also, uh, like, talked about expansion. But I don't think the Mountain West has any ambition to come this far. They're I don't, not going east of the Mississippi. Well, but they... No, I'm talking about for UTEP, right? Like that. Why, why would you pick them up? What, what would benefit you for that? And see that I don't know. I don't like know that benefits you zero. So I mean, they they do have New Mexico in there already, but they they didn't bring in New Mexico Just State. Say. I wonder if anybody's going to drop down to FCS. Like I, I don't think anybody does that voluntarily. Other well, than you, you Idaho should. And, I mean, we've talked about that. UTEP and and UMass, which UMass has just got to FBS, and UConn, those teams should go to FBS, FCS. I, I don't – I think there's so much more money involved in FBS, even for independents that, that don't make a ton, right? I just I, – I wonder what the next step is going to be for those. Like, I think UTEP – UTEP uh, – UTEP has a, a really devout fan base – that, that's not huge, but when they are good, man, they fill up the Sun Bowl and it's fifty something thousand people strong. And they, I mean, they're six and one. Like it, there's there is somewhat of a fan base down there if you can get good. And Dana Demel has them playing uh, really well this season. I mean, they're six and one right now. But uh, I just it, it's so strange to think about the idea that Southern Miss or FIU or even Old Dominion, etc., might not have a conference. It's really yeah. weird. Yeah. So, or even, I mean, if the Sun Belt doesn't expand, uh, MTSU, Marshall, Louisiana Tech, Western Kentucky. That's weird to me. So, uh, you know, uh, unless unless Conference USA were to keep these eight teams and bring in two of the independents. Yeah. I You got me. I don't know what the next step is. So this is this is interesting. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.